Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video I'll be taking a look at one of the best PC pickups I think I've ever got. So let's have a look. Now this PC I picked up from eBay and I got it for a really really good price. I actually only paid £12 for it which is that's good just for the case even. But obviously there's a lot more to the build than just the case so let's have a quick look around it and see what I've actually got. Now first up on the front obviously you can see there's a DVD drive and a floppy drive which gives some sort of indication that it's not as as modern as the case might make you think. Looking around to the side of the case, we can see this uh, this Intel Inside Pentium 4 sticker, which is another indicator as to what might be inside this machine. But also it's part of what attracted me to the bidding onto this PC because it just looks really cool. Also on the other side, you can see there's Intel Pentium 4 stickers although they are upside down so that triggers my OCD a little bit so doing my usual browsing on eBay I did come across this one on a local collection only which obviously limits the the competition for the bids and more often than not you can get lucky on an auction especially ones that start low if there's no other really interested bidders then you are going to win it near the starting price which is what happened with this one in the past I have I have won auctions very low with collection only and the sellers have gone on to cancel this sale as obviously they didn't want to sell at that price but luckily for me in this one the seller did go ahead and complete the sale which I'm very happy with. If you do happen to stumble on this video somehow then thank you very much. Now the eBay listing although the title wasn't great the description it did list everything that was in included with the PC so there wasn't really any any major surprises to be had but still I was very keen to pick it up and get it home and just see if it works and what I can do with it. It didn't come with a PSU or a GPU which that always leaves the element of does it actually work so as soon as I got home I did throw a PSU into it and a GeForce 210 and it fired straight up into Windows XP which we will look at later on in the video. First up, let's take a look at everything that's inside of the PC, have a look what we got included, and talk about what we might do with it in the future. First, let's take a look at the RAM. Now, we've got two sticks here, both two gigabytes in size, so four gigabytes in total. Of course, they're dominated GT, which runs at 2000 megahertz, which is top of the line for DDR3. Very pleased to have that included with the build. Also, I forgot to mention the CPU cooler, it did have a water cooler fitted, which obviously I don't have any water cooling parts anymore. I did used to, but not interested in water cooling anymore or custom loops. So I had to take the CPU block off and just fit this Cooler Master cooler just for testing. The CPU, as I know from the eBay listing, it is a Pentium 4 661 with hyper threading. So near the top of the line for Pentium 4s, but nowhere near top of the line for what this motherboard can handle and the motherboard really is the star of the show here this is what really got me excited about this deal it is an evga enforce 790i ultra sli which is quite a mouthful but as you can see it's got three pcie x16 slots and you can do three-way sli on this board which could be fun for future projects now, even though this is a late socket 775 motherboard, it does still have some good features if you're building some more retro PCs. You have got the IDE port and also the floppy port. So we can add floppy drives if he was to do an XP build. Very easy to transfer files from USB and then to floppy to even older PCs. I also forgot to mention there was a sound, sound, block, sound card even fitted. It was a Sound Blaster Orgy G2. I have I did remove it while I was fitting a PSU and haven't had a chance to test it yet but with everything else working there's no reason to believe it doesn't work so that is a very nice Windows XP sound card to have. We also have the two regular PCI slots which the Sound Blaster was plugged into. Very handy for plugging in the older sound cards. On the back of the motherboard you can see it's got a whole lot of connectivity a lot of USB ports, even a Firewire port, 
dual gigabit network ports sound ports for surround sound which obviously we won't be using because we will use that sound blaster also digital audio out but again we won't be using that because we'll be using the sound blaster now in my excitement for the auction something i did forget about was that it does also come with a solid state drive just a 60 gigabyte kingston but that's more than enough for a retro os windows xp in this case but it also did come with a Western Digital Velociraptor, which I've never actually seen one in the flesh before. At first I did just think this was a laptop drive inside some sort of weird three and a half inch adapter. But I'm very happy to have one of these. Couldn't afford one of these back in the day, so be interesting to see what sort of performance you could get from them. So now we've had a quick look around the machine. I could have gone on to more, into more detail about the motherboard and that, but all of the specs are there online and I was just too excited really to get this set up and see what I can do with it. Which is where the next unexpected part of the build came along. And after I did put a power supply and a graphics card in, the machine fired straight up into a build of Windows XP with a lot of retro games already pre-installed. So I'm going to put another power supply back in because I have since had to take that out for another build. But I've got another power supply now to go into this machine and I'm going to fire it up and we'll take a look around the install how it's been set up because the processor has been overclocked by the previous owner so we'll take a look at that see what sort of performance we can get in some games and then think about maybe doing some upgrades so here we are booted into Windows XP I've got CPU-Z and GPU-Z opened up you can see the CPU overclock overclocking settings there it's overclocked to just under 4 GHz and the GPU I have switched to a 650 Ti instead of the 210 that I did have in there there was no reason to do that other than I saw a 650 Ti on my desk and wanted to see if it still worked and it does so now I've got a 650 Ti in the machine as you've seen just pop up because we've been messing with the hardware Windows XP now wants us to reactivate it which I'm probably not going to do. So on the desktop, we can see there's already quite a lot of games already installed. Some of them do need the disc to play, but there's a lot of them that don't. So I have had probably a bit too much time playing some of these games that are already on here. The machine does seem to have been set up almost purely as a retro gaming PC, which is fun. Uh, although there is AVG antivirus installed, which uh, I would certainly wouldn't put this computer onto the internet, so I don't really see any need for that. Interestingly, there's a logo I haven't seen for a while down here, the Windows Messenger logo. I do miss that. So I think first off, before I take a look at any of the games that are already installed, let's run a 3D Mark 06, since that's what that's the year this CPU came out. So let's run a quick benchmark and see what score we get. So just under 7,000 3D marks overall, 
obviously in the CPU tests, the single core CPU did not have a great time. And the 650 Ti being six years newer, really carried it through the other tests. But well, let's move on to some games. Now, first up is Quake. I've got it running in this weird resolution because it's the only one that scales well on this monitor. So as you can see, the machine has absolutely no problem running Quake 3. Not that we ever expected it not to. So as you can see, there is actually quite a lot of games already installed on here. But without the CDs, I won't be able to play them. But obviously, we can see the previous owner used this as a retro gaming machine and it must have had quite a good time because there's a lot of good games on here. So I'm going to end the video here. Obviously we just took a quick a quick look at how the previous owner had this PC set up. It looked like it was a very nice retro gaming machine and hopefully he had some good times on it before we purchased it. Now my plans for this one in the future are, well I, I just can't resist filling all the PCIe slots in on that motherboard so I'm gonna go I'm going to throw a quad, a quad core CPU in and try and find three matching GPUs from around that time period. Probably something like 8800 GTSs, possibly GTS 260s if I do decide to go a little bit newer. So there's not too much else I can actually take a look at on here now without having the original CDs. I've done a 3D Mark 06 so when I do come to upgrading it I'll have something to compare it to. So if you have enjoyed this video and you do want to see what I get up to in the future, hit that subscribe button. And if you like the video, then hit the like button. That would be much appreciated. Thank you.